going to be covering ShopRite for us. Um, we've seen the market pick up nicely after the coalition announcement. So on ShopRite being one of the stocks running quite hard, uh, Ross is going to give us some insight into their numbers and their business model and things they think important. And then you're welcome to ask questions either through the chat or by uh, switching on your mic and asking them outright. Uh, you're welcome to do either. Uh, if you think of questions whilst we're doing the presentation, please type them in the chat so that we can get cracking straight after. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm going to now hand over to Ross, and then Ross will hand over to Sean to do the technical bit. Thank you, Ross. Morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us for another one of our calls on a Thursday. Uh, today we're going to the food retailer ShopRite. Um, just let me know. Uh, just want to see if my screen is changing. Now, just get a thumbs up. You can see that. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I'll go straight into it. Um, Shoprite, obviously the the biggest food retailer in South Africa currently. Uh, they have a junior end, so the data is a little bit old. Um, we only have numbers for the end of December. Uh, we should see the 2024 numbers come out uh, at about mid July. Um, but so far, I'll just touch on what uh, bring up speed for the end of. 2023, their first half 2024. Uh, and we saw a nice um, revenue growth of about 14% for ShopRite. Uh, it is 6.5% when you uh, count for their store growth, so 6.5% like for like. Uh, and this was mainly driven by uh, price increases uh, as their volumes were down about 1%. Um, this is, has been the same for all the food retailers for spa and pick and pay. Um, Growth has been driven through price increases, um, especially in a high inflation environment. Um, but as I'll touch on a bit later, they, they are a little bit expensive. Um, it is a quality company, but you are having to pay quite a high price for it. Um, and we'll have a look at the PE, um, which is looking a little bit stressed uh, a little bit later. Uh, another interesting point from their results was they had a market share growth of about 4 billion rand, which makes it 56 months of uninterrupted growth, which is uh, quite incredible when you think that's almost five years of uh, growth. Uh, and then diesel costs were about 500 million for the last six months of the year. Uh, diesel costs haven't really been much of a talking point uh, recently uh, due to the lower load shedding that we've all uh, we've all seen. Uh, but 500 million points to uh, in six months points to about an annual run rate of about a billion. Uh, which is a bit better than their worst case scenario. Uh, at the peak load shedding, they were burning through about 150 million rands worth of diesel per month. So that would put it on an annual run rate of about 1.8 billion. Uh, and when it comes to food retailers who have very sensitive margins, um, that does impact the, the, the bottom line. But uh, better diesel switch to solar will obviously increase uh, their margins over time. Uh, we do have a whole recommendation uh, when our Released when I released this report or wrote it last uh, last week, the share price was about 251 rand, uh, which was a five percent downside to my intrinsic of 236. Um, and in the last week with the uh, SA Inc. running, we obviously have seen shop rights go up by another 20 percent, uh, so that would add to a downside. Um, uh, so good for the guys who are holding the share, a little bit expensive if you're looking to buy in right now. Uh, so this is just, uh, I took this from the from the uh, ShopRite results presentation. I think it just, it's quite interesting because uh, this is essentially what the average consumer will feel on their pockets. Uh, last year, we had 12.3% food inflation. Uh, ShopRite managed to, the internal inflation about, about 10%. So they shielded the consumer a little bit from uh, an inflation, but even at 10%, it's uh, it's quite high. And in certain food price, uh, certain food items, you would have seen much larger numbers. Um, so that was at the end of June last year. Um, towards December, it was down to about eight and a half, of which ShopRite had internal selling prices of about 8%, um, which is a lot better. And uh, I think we've seen from the recent CPI numbers that it's still coming down, but uh, it is still high and you are working off quite a high base as well. So if you look at that over a two, three year period, uh, food price has uh, dramatically increased uh, for the average consumer. Um, ShopRite started a very, very good job in the last uh, few years. Um, Peter Engelbrecht, the CEO, has uh, led the charge and um, they've consistently grown market share and become South Africa's biggest food retailer. Uh, they've got leading leading margins. Um, if you look at that top, uh, call it gold line, uh, they have gross margins of about 24%. 
Um, and right at the bottom, you've got net in, net margins of about three and a half percent, which is which is leading. Um, Spa and Pick and Pay have obviously had their own issues, but um, the Spa, Spa targets about two and a half percent, and Pick and Pay was about one and a half percent. So they have definitely got the foothold in, in terms of uh, creating the most value per sale in terms of earnings, um, and they've they've done a good job at not stepping on any landmines as the other food retailers have. So from as far as quality goes, definitely the, the quality business in the, in amongst its peers. I won't spend too long here, but this is just the breakdown of the market share growth. You can see towards the end of last year, constant, constantly um, growing their market share. Um, and for the total of um, 2023, they had about 8 billion, of which it's about a half and a half splits between USA, which is their lower LSM um, stores, and um, the rest may, being made up by, by checkers, uh, which is your sort of medium to high income um, stores. Uh, and as we'll see, they've also expanded into a lot of other different business units. Uh, 6060, I think, has been a large part of everyone's lives in the last since COVID. You can see that the business started up and running in the first half of 2021. So that would have been the first six months of 2022. Um, sorry, of 2020. Um, and then they've just gone in leaps and bounds from there. Um, so even in the last year, we had 63% uh, increase in 6060 sales, and that's already on the back of a huge increase in the base. Um, so when you consider that growth, um, it's, it's very, very impressive. Uh, unfortunately, they don't give us the exact numbers. They just tell us the growth and the downloads and the new jobs. Um, but the competition is coming. Um, SPA just released their results, and they had a 500% increase. Uh, once again, coming off a lower base as ShopRite was first to market when it came to uh, online deliveries. Uh, but the rest of the guys are trying to catch up. Whether that will happen or not is up for debate, but uh, it is it is going to be increased competition going forward. Uh, so as I commented earlier, they had 14% revenue growth, but only 6.5% like-to-like, because when you take into account their store expansion, um, I mean, in the space of, uh, one year of 2023, you had almost 300 uh, new uh, store locations. Uh, about 90 of that came from the acquisition of MassMart, um, of which most of those came uh, expanded in uh, the liquor shops. Uh, and then on top of that, they added the pet shop business. And then in the other, you've got um, Unique, which is their clothing clothing retailer, and they've got now the outdoor the ShopRite Outdoor, which will compete with the likes of uh, Cape Union Mark. Um, but the majority of it coming from a liquor store expansion and uh, from uh, just the ShopRite general group. Um, I had to put this in and update it this morning because um, things moved very quickly in the last week. Um, as I said, when I when I wrote this presentation, the, sh the pre share price was about 250. So we had 290 as of yesterday. Um, and if you catch ours onto the far right of that uh, that table, you can just see the PE comparisons between ShopRite and its peers. Um, I mean, compared to Spot, it's trading at double its price to earnings, and over Woolies, it's about 30% up or 30% premium. Uh, can't really do it for pick and pay because pick and pay have entered loss making territory. Um, but it does does show that you you have to pay up for a quality business, uh, and whilst that PE uh, can be justified as higher than than its peers, um, I'm of the opinion at the moment that's just a little bit too high. Um, so there there could be value elsewhere in the food retailer business. Um, this might be looking a little bit outdated because uh, the downside is only 5% here, so it's close to about 30% at the moment as of today's share price. But essentially, we take a 2025 EBIT number and uh, work backwards, um, getting all the way down to a base case um, share price of 232 Rand. Uh, that's where the majority of our case weight, case weight sits. Um, and anything closer to that, I'd, I'd take it as fair valued and uh, become a little bit more interesting to us. But uh, 290 Rand, it is um, it's difficult to buy, but um, and 
probably difficult to sell as well, um, seeing as you've done very well in the share price, you've, you've held on to it. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, a little bit, a little bit stretched in my opinion. I'm gonna jump over to this because this um, is just the, the numbers uh, for ShopRite over three years. I think the next chart will basically just point a bit better of a picture. Um, so this is basically just a one year number rebased at 100. Um, just comparing ShopRite to its peers, uh, that being Spa, Pick and Pay, and sort of Woolies, because uh, Woolies isn't a like for like comparison. Uh, and then comparing just to the JSC Cap Swix and the Staples subsector. Uh, so if you hold ShopRite over the last year, you've done quite nicely, almost 30% up. Uh, with the spots near as close as that, about 12%. Um, but then if you look in the bottom two charts, you can just see this is a relative composition. It basically looks at peers, um, peer averages, and its own average. Uh, you can see um, in the bottom left there, you've got three food retailers, and then you've got the three food producers, that being AVR, Tiger Brands, and Lipstar. Um, so most of these guys are trading below their average PEs, uh, with the exception of um, ShopRite, which is basically at its, at its long-term average. And then AVR, which is up about 40% in the last year, is also at its average. Uh, so at a 22 PE, uh, you are paying a bit of a premium for this business. Um, part of that, I think, is justified. Quality business leading in the market. Um, and part of it, I think, is uh, a little bit steep and a bit overpriced at the moment. And that brings me to the end of my um, presentation. I'll take any questions after Sean has gone through the technicals for you. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Yeah, you can you can see the chart there. That's until last night's close. You can see the chart of ShopRite. Uh, it shows that the share price is trading uh, at a new all-time high. Um, I see this morning the price has pulled back a bit, so it's pulled back 1.38%, trading around about 288 at the moment. But uh, there's an old saying in the market you know, it goes, uh, new high carries on, carries on making new highs. Um, so a new high is usually um, favorable for conditions where there's no oversupply of traders that's forming at that sell. So they're not, they don't want to sell at those levels uh, or they get even. So the <laughs> blue sky potential. So you can see also on the chart here the previous all time high, it's around about 277. Um, and obviously that move above that long-term resistance trend line, the share price actually has moved out uh, of a long-term sideways or trendless uh, trading range. Uh, at this point in time, the trend, I'm, I'm still calling it bullish in the medium and long-term. Um, it's trading above its 21-day and 40-day moving averages, as well as its 200-day moving average. So that bullish sentiment is confirmed by the, at the bottom there, the, the MACD indicator. Uh, it's trading in overbought territory and above its trigger uh, line, but it's got no uh, no uh, bearish signals yet. Um, uh, as as Ross alluded to now, you know on the back of this recent 20% uh, sharp rise, uh, you know, it, it, was, it is expensive. So I'd rather wait for the share price to pull back uh, on some profit taking, and maybe move back towards that uh, previous resistance level at 277 and possibly 267 before entering a trade. Um, and as Ross said, you know, the intrinsic value is at 236. You can also see on the chart there, so that's trading far above it. But uh, we still have an old recommendation on it. Yeah, that's how I see the technicals on this chart. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Ross. Yes, um, definitely a quality company, but it looks a bit steep price-wise at the moment. And I think that piece that you see on the right-hand side of the chart there is just caused by relief that uh, it looks like the election has resulted in a favorable outcome uh, for the country and, and, and everybody's hopeful. But I mean, these things take time to fix and, and, and it's not going to happen overnight. So I think spikes like these are likely to, to pull back a little bit, um, especially seen in light of how expensive this company is if you look at it from an earnings point of view. Uh, but nonetheless, lots of 6060 scooters racing around, lots of new business being generated. Uh, we touched in another discussion on the share in USAVE, which is tackling the informal market. Um, yeah, and, and in the words of a colleague of ours that said, uh, you know, it's one of those things, 
there are a couple of examples like it. It's expensive, but it just tends to get more expensive. <laughs> but certainly not an Apple or a Tesla or an Nvidia. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, looking for a slight pullback and then uh, probably a continuation of, of of pushing higher because Checkers is definitely the leader in the space. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat. Is there anybody who wants to ask a question to Ross outright? You can just switch on your mic. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, it's uh, too expensive to buy, but then also tough to sell if you're holding it, eh? Um, so uh, if it does pull back maybe to those 250 levels that Sean has marked there, the previous high, you're going to get to that support zone or maybe to the level just lower than that, which was a previous resistance level, then I would say you can take another, another nibble, but the, the current highs, it's quite expensive. Um, Dennis says, can the current highs hold or is sell a good idea? Dennis, it depends what your strategy is. Um, if you're holding the stock with the intent of holding it for the for the next five or ten years, then then you shouldn't be liquidating it, trying to time the market and, and, and buying it on a pullback. But if you have shorter term trading goals, then certainly selling at the current levels, I think the possibility or the probability of it pulling back to lower levels and affording you the opportunity to buy it back cheaper uh, exists. But uh, we mostly, if you if you have a buy and hold strategy, then that makes it tough because to time the market and to really get it right is is hard. And and we've seen with a lot of these ideas that we roll out um, that the market goes the adverse direction, and it's got nothing to do with the fundamentals of the company. It's just a phase that the market's in. So um, yeah, definitely up from a trader's perspective, definitely a, a, an opportunity to take some profit. And sell and purchase it at lower levels, but buy and hold. You just sit on it. Let's see. Alexander says thank you. Clive says thank you. Uh, Dennis, I trust that answered your question. I don't see anything else. So, last for the last. That ah, is a thumbs up. Thank you very much, Ross. Thanks for that insight. Thank you, Sean. Uh, we'll catch up next week. And I think next week is Naspers. Yeah. Yeah. So next week is a biggie as well. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Have a nice day, guys. Cheers. Oh, sorry. I saw a hand. I saw a hand. Who is that? Maybe it was an error. There was definitely a hand that went up there. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you next week, guys. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Thank you.